Christine Lagarde, direktorica mednarodnega denarnega sklada, na vprašanje, ali jo kaj teži trpljenje grških državljanov. Ne. Pomislim na majhne otroke iz šola v majhni vasici v Nigru, ki so deležni dveh urbov v Kanadan, ki si po trije delijo enstov in ki si srčno želijo izobrazve. Ne prestano mislim na njih, ker menim, da potrebujejo še več pomoči kot ljudje v Atenah. In kako naj se grki poberejo iz krize? Tako, da plačajo davke. Kaj pa, volitve? Nekdo je nekoč rekel, da če ljudstvo ni zadovoljno z vlado, je treba pač zamenjati ljudstvo. 16. letnik Delovsko-Pankarske univerze. Letošnja tema – dvojna kriza evrointegracij. Okay, <clears throat> it's great to be in Ljubljana again, especially in this atmos atmosphere of revolt where you can sense the Molotov Molotovs in every corner uh, in streets. I will, try to, I will try to reconstruct the last 20 years of, uh, of uh, Croatian history with some conclusions, uh, with some conclusions uh, focusing on uh, strategies uh, of uh, political struggle against imposed austerity. I, okay. I will begin this discussion with one episode from Don Quixote, which metaphorically very precisely describes the situation which was dominant during the, during the debate on Croatian accession to the European Union. In one of the first of his adventures, Cervantes' hero encounters a group of traders, and with firm voice, he demands of them to bow down before the true beauty of Dulcinea. But one of the traders shiftly answers, how will, they, how will we do that when we do, when we do not know her? Let us see her, and, and if it's indeed, as you say, we will bow to her beauty. And then comes Don Quixote with his medieval reply, if I show her to you, with what great thing would you do by admitting the truth? It is important to believe without seeing, acknowledge it, swear by it, and, def and defend it. That is the key of all his madness, to believe in one's, in one's ideal when there is not a single rational, that, rational reason that justifies it. Exactly this was the dominant narrative in the debate on European Union since, since the 2000s. And today, in Croatia, is a very similar story with austerity. So the Slovenian resistance can be a powerful incentive for awakening from European dream, especially since the Slovenia is in the Croatian narrative often singled out as an example of a positive economic transition and integration in the European Union. But, but to understand how this discourse of the European Union became so dominant, in Croatia, it is necessary to go back to the 90s. The breakup of Yugoslavia was supposed to bring its former republics to new dawn. It was supposed to bring former republics of Yugoslavia the new dawn of economic prosperity. The promise of higher living standards was for formulated through integration with Western countries. Croatia became independent in 1991 and many people were expecting a better life, a better future. Instead of a better life, they were given a blood-soaked civil war between, Cro between Croats and Serbs, intentionally strengthened by the both, by elites, with, uh, by the elites of both sides of the border. War and escalation of nationalism were the curtain behind which was conducted ruthless plunder of property. In fact, as you know, all enterprises were socially owned and controlled by, work, controlled by workers. So the process of transforming the econ economic economies of East, of Eastern and Southeast Europe by, was denoted by, denoted by concept of transition was in fact a form of the havoc of social property. The government resolutely implement, implemented the guiding lines 
to the guiding principles of the triumphant neoliberal paradigm, privatization, liberalization, and deregula de deregulation, marked by term Washington Consensus, unquestionable victory of neoliberal capitalist, capitalist truth, which Fukuyama triumphantly and pretentiously heralded as the end of history, although the only end for the many people in ex Yugoslavia quick, quick, quickly come to be familiar with was the end of hope for a better future. It is especially necessary to critically highlight that part of re reforms related to privatization, which often represented obvious state distribution of public property to loyal party members, close to power as, as some sort of, feu uh, of feudal tenor for obedience to, politi uh, for obedience to political seniors. The first present Franja Tudjman, instead of self-management, promoted thesis of 200 wealthy families who will run the economy, while his party lieutenants plainly developed class theories on which society should be divided. The war was an ideal opportunity to put their ideas into, into action. Most enterprises, were, most enterprises were privatized and uh, at, the be at the beginning of the 90s. Industry that has been the main drive of economic development over the decades in Yugoslavia rapidly diminished. Restoration of capitalist relations during the war at the beginning of the 90s will leave the most severe effects precisely on the industry. Even before war, industry was going through a period of stagnation due to the loss of Eastern markets, collapse of the socialist bloc, and the disappearance of the Yugoslavia market. Adapting to the capitalist mode of production in the context of, of privatization, factories were chips in feudal distributions from seniors toward obedient vassals. So industrial plants were disappearing in a process in which new owners had only one thing on the mind, sale of, the, of material factors of production, machinery, buildings, offices, cars, the value of land. Companies that were given for political loyalty or sold almost for nothing were vanishing in a mad chase for money. Factories will partly disappear Factories will partly disappear in the war. In the war, those that will survive will be owned by the, the by the tycoons who, who who quickly became monopolists. And workers could not resist because they were mostly mobilized for war operations. In the conditions of appreciated exchange rate, it was much it was much more difficult to realize uh, exports. Concurrent process of liberalization of domestic of the domestic market with strong development, uh, development of import caused the change in the structure of the economy and the disappearance of comparative advantage in the, in the, in the international trade. Particularly, particularly was, in fact, it was, was affected in the textile industry. Export activities, which in Yugoslavia realized most of the revenues, were influenced by the circumstances of the privatization process, the powerful and the powerful import and inhibiting exchange rate, which all led to a declining of their significance. Except for the textile industry, it also refers to the food and beverages, to the production of chemicals, production of chemical products, etc. The drop in productions was also recorded in, in, the, in industrial sectors with higher value added, like electrical industry. The decline in industrial productions was massive. In 1995, levels of, produ of production were only 57% 50, of those in the 90s. Jobs in the manufacturing industry were quickly disappearing. Without an active industrial policy, industrial development was during the 90s left to the market conditions dictated by the neoliberal stabilization, pro stabilization program which diminished industrial production. A lost the jobs in the in industry were quickly substituted by rapid growth of the service sector, which, which denoted the transformation of the economy to the import-based import one. And this was followed by the opening of stores, restaurants, revitalization of the tu tourism after 1995. Consequences of implementing the shock doctrine con contained in the Washington Consensus were well known even before they were achieved in the former socialist countries, since the program was, all, was, was already practiced in Latin America, Latin American countries. 
in Eastern and Southeast, South, Southeastern Europe neoliberal agenda as the last form of capitalism only meant one more confirmation that capitalism, regardless of, of where and how it's applied, leads to a pronounced social disproportion, pro, disproportions and tensions caused by cutting the social net, the demands for fiscal constraints, strict stabilization policies, or accumulation of capital for, privatiza for privatization. Ideological, ideological direction of, re of reforms is clear. Ex-socialist countries, uh, ex countries must abandon Dark, must abandon the socialist darkness on their upward trajectory toward the modern liberal democracy with capitalism at its center without, of, without possibility of turnaway regardless of the number of victims who will certainly be thrown out of this, of this unstoppable train solely guilty for their own destiny because they are unable to adapt to a new social order Nationalist government decided, decided to destroy all mention, all mention of Yugoslavia. So, so, so self-management was demonized from the beginning, even though it represented one of the rare true accomplishments of social development after, sec, after the Second World War, by which Yugoslavia was known all around the world. The need of obliteration of self-management as a symbol of period of socialism, but also as a model of labor organization, supposedly meant ensuring implementation of the set of economic reforms. But at the core of abolition of self-management and the introduction of market principles was not the real desire for free market, but the desire for distribution of property among the new political elite. But to theoretically justify the, the, uh, justify the usurpa usurpation, the model of the free market will be very useful. Behind this, behind this model, you can defend the theft, the theft of public property by the alleged market maladjustment or moral failures of implementing the free market. Even though the model of capitalism and the private accumulation always results in criminal, activity, criminal activities and fraudulent behavior, distinct class differ, differentiation, poverty, unemployment, exclusion, and weakening of democracy regardless of where or how it appeared, no matter what was the institutional, institutional arrangement that, in, that ensured its introduction. Theoretical reflection of, transi of transition process often show confusions in, in mainstream research, so they often repeat the myth of creation transition. There was, no, there, there was no real capitalism, but predatory capitalism. And what we need is, is just capitalism as it exists in the European Union. It was, it was the consequences of the belief that there is a form of capitalism that will righteously reward the diligent and punish negligent and prone to dishonesty. And what exists in reality is a form of clientelistic capitalism that was not wanted. So the blame for the failure <laughs> of the transition reforms was, was primarily articulated in an in, 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 in inadequate institutional arrangement under the which the process occurred, corrupt political elites. <clears throat> and ultimately, the bad moral of the citizens themselves who are overly pessimistic and do not reflect optimism, optimism recorded in the publications of World Bank. So poor morale of the individuals stopped stopped the development of an advanced market model that supposedly should have, should have bare fruits for all. Liber liberal voices <coughs> marked the corrupt nationalist government as the worst culprit for the failure to adapt to the regulated capitalism. And this period was really, was really was also character characterized by limited freedom and political rights, such as freedom as a, a freedom of assembly and to protest, while the media were, were spreading lobotomiz lobotomizing propaganda. Implications for the overall social social economic system system were quite dire. It took it took only a few years to to destroy what was built for four and a half decades. In the initial period, think in the additional period unions were helpless because, uh, because of the sheer threat of physical liquidation. So they agreed to compromise with those who constituted the new class. 
and to this day the union the union centrals remain disjoined in trying to provide serious resistance the biggest opposition party the social Dem the social democrats also did not organize any on any action against the government except for expect except on the level of liberal rhetoric the roaring 90s did not finish with only political and cultural bankrupt it was it was also a finan financial bankrupt most banks most banks bankrupted in 1999 but were quickly bailed out with public funds amounting to 10 billion to 10 billion dollars after remediation banks were sold to austrian and italian capital for barely a million for barely a billion dollar so there was a difference of 9 of 9 billion dollars this was followed by the privatization of the public tele telecommunication network that was sold to Ge that was sold to the german deutsche telecom it was a sort of thank you for political support during the 90s. Of all the Eastern European countries, at the end of the period, Croatia had the highest unemployment rate, amounting to 20, 20, 20, 23%. Frank Tuchman died in December of 1999, which symbolically marked the end of a dark period, so-called transition to democracy. The property was divided, politically, economic elites formed, class position fixed, and the people disfranchised and empowered. In this context, the narrative of, U of European integrations was more than wel welcome. Yugoslavia has failed you, the nation state has failed you, but European Union, it will save you. <clears throat> well, coming to the challenges of the new millennium. At the beginning of 2000, six-party coalition led by social Demo democrats won a landslide victory in the in the parliament, parliamentary elections. They gained more than two-thirds of, two of seats in parliament, which enabled amendments to the constitution. Their platform was based on the promise of pro-European pro pro reforms and the punishment for all crimes in the previous decade. Great, ex great expectations of the people expressed in the election results were quickly disappointed. The process of privatization that was not cancelled, the process of privatization of theft was not cancelled, nor was anyone held accountable for, this, for the destruction of over a thousand companies. The new government didn't, didn't turn to revitalization of production. It's, instead, it, it agreed to the dict dictates of international capital. In July 2000, Croatia became a member of the International Monetary Fund and signed a standby stand arrangement, which which means exactly what was what was what was what, what, what was promised on the in the in the beginning of the 90s liberalization more liberalization privatization deregulation a year later in 2001 croatia joined the world trade organization which meant invitation to foreign com to foreign competition to devastate domestic enterprises in this way the industry has continued to de deteriorate and, their ser and the service sector has flourished. An additional blow was a new law on the central bank, which was guaranteed so-called independence to central bank, with its main policy identical to that of the 90s. Protection of the appreciated exchange rate, which further encouraged the development of an import-based economy. It is well known how this process works. European banks offer, offer, offer credit loans that finance consumption for dev from developed European countries. So the consumption was, the be was based on the bank loans, which were the main driving force of growth until the outbreak of the crisis. Thus, even before the formal application for, mem for, membership, for, for membership in the European Union, Croatian economic, Croatian economic trajectory was firmly defined. The accession process only further consolidated the existing neoliberal process, and more, import and more importantly, it, it amputated the discussion on, on any sort of an alternative. I mean political and economic alternative uh, outside the European Union. Consumer loans did, did improve the standard of, of living, new jobs started to open, and entry into the European Union at that time, in the early years of the new millennium, was easily articulated as, the, as an illusion of even better future. Just as the credits have spurred the economy, the life in civilized European reality should set us free 
from, from set us free from nationalist bum, bums, corrupt politicians, cultural barbarism. barbarism. The agreement of stabilization and association was initiated in May 2001 in Brussels. With this agreement, Croatia was given the stat status of an associated member and potential ca candidate for admission. The objective of this agreement was to establish so-called political dialogue between European Union and, ca and candidate countries, harmonize legislation to promote economic relations, develop a free, free trade zone, and to ensure re regional cooperation and cooperation in many other areas. Croatia applied for membership in February 2003, and the official status of candidate for EU membership was received a year later, in 2000, 2004. But access negotiations that, that were scheduled to begin in March 2005 were delayed. As a, and as a condition for starting negotiation, negotiations, it was demanded full cooperation with Hague tribu Tribunal for war crimes committed in former Yugoslavia. Negotiations were officially opened in October 2005, only after a principal hot pro pro prosecutor confirmed that Croatia is in full cooperation with the ICTE. In 2005, social democrats were no longer in power. This disappointment in their political promises was too great. Reformed nationalists, led by Ivo Sanader, rise to, rise to acquire power again. They were in charge of negotiations with Euro bureaucracy on conditions uh, for membership. The very process of negotiations was being conducted at the utmost secret and was totally excluded from any, from any public debate. All the parliamentary parties supported the road to the European Union, and no social institution has ever questioned any problem that could potentially arise for membership. Dominant, dominant, dominant discourse was in, impenetrable, it was bulletproof. The results of negotiations be, uh, became known only a few days before the referendum, although the decisions were, were made years earlier. I will mention the most controversial points negotiated in the area of agricultural in, and industrial production. <clears throat> well, concerning ag agriculture, Croatia has nearly 4 million, of acre, uh, 4 million acres of arable land, but the subs subs subsidies will cover only 2.7 million. So either some farmers, farmers will lose their subsidies or subs subsidies for the land will be lower. Especially interesting are the negotiated quotas for sugar and milk. Although the required, although the required quotas were less than the current production, negotiated quotas were even less than that. So it will be necessary to close some sugar factories. When we analyze quotas for milk, situation isn't any better. Not only will the production quotas for milk be less than, demand, less than demanded, but also the purchase price uh, the, purchase, uh, uh, the purchase price of uh, uh, price will be conditional on milk market condi uh, conditions, which in this case means that domestic producers with their prices will not be able to compete with, uh, with highly subsidized producers in the European Union. Also, by joining the European Union, Croatia will, will lose privileged position in the CEF, in the CEF, in the CEFTA market, and will have to implement a common trade policy with, uh, of the European Union. Previous trade surpl surpluses that have been realized in, in, in CEFTA market will be burdened by the export duties, while simultaneously import of many products will be, disa will be disabled due to strictly defined standards of the European Union. Problems in this area will be particularly pronounced in the trade with Bosnia and Herzegovina, which is the major trading partner. So we can expect the increase of tariff rates between 5 and 18 percent. In turn, from the European Union will arrive cheap subsidized products that will be hard to compete with. This will, this will lead to a complete agri agriculture transformation to dependence of food imports, which lies upon fluctuations of food prices in European and world markets. And all of this is very possible because the political elites complied to diminish their own agricultural production. The only remaining production will be concentrated in the hands of a few industrial food producers, producers 
for locally privileged capitalists with political support. Sustainable agricultural production of small producers will quickly be erased. Instead of production, they should turn to rural development. And this means they will, it will, they will become some sort of combination of small homemade production and tourist, tourist attraction with goal of protecting, protecting the environment. The second point, the second con uh, controver controversial area was, uh, was industry, especially, sh uh, especially shipbuilding. Shipbuilding is the most controversial point of the, of the negotiations with the European Union within the framework of the chapter relating to market competition with the, sec with the state, with the state subs subs subsidies to shipyards being the field of battle. Although there is no shipbuilding industry in the world, which is not at least partly supported by the state, Croatia was given a harsh order to restructure existing shipyards in a way to make them profitable since the state has no money to invest for technological moder modernization, it opted for privatization that will actually lead to the elimination of production and the, clo and the, clo and the closure of the, ship of the shipyard jobs. In Croatia, there are five large and 20 small shipyards. And these small ship shipyards are mostly private, privately owned. And these five, or five, large, five large, or large ones are state owned. <clears throat> Especially these large one shipyards are in the middle of access of the negotiation problem. In these shipyards, these shipyards employ about 9,000 9, workers. Subcontractors are employing 4,000 workers, and various vendors are employing 25,000 workers. So, so ship, shipyards are connected with 40,000 jobs. And if add, and if we add to this their family estimates, est, estimate is that about 150, 100, 150,000 people live of the ship, shipbuilding industry. Shipbuilding is the strongest export sector, which provides 10 percent of Croatian exports, which in 2009 amounted to 450 million euros, and in 2010, 653 million euros. According to ship, ship, Shipbuilding Delivers, Croatia is currently the fifth, the fifth in the Europe and fourth, 14th in the world. Shipbuilding is really the last technolo technologically complex industry that survived the disintegration of Yugoslavia and which has a strong multiplier effect on the economy because the ship is complex product associated with, which associates manufacturing industry and in industries and many other services. Calculations show that the budget subsidies for the shipbuilding industry are 100, 154 million euros, but it repay, repays through spending 171 million euros. It means that the state budget in the ship, shipbuilding industry realized profits of around 1% of, around of the total budget revenues. With the closing of shipyards, all this will disappear, and the European Union, except, except for the, requir except for the requir requirement to abolish the subsidies, also requests 20% 20, 20 reduction, re reduction in production. Shipbuilding is a low-profit industry that is generally not attractive to private investors. Croatian shipbuilding industry could produce technologically demand ships, but prior to that it needs to go, to go through a process of modernization to reorganize corporations with subcontractors who, who frequently draw extremely high financial resources for various corruptive schemes and needs to prevent the party cutters to run executive and supervisory boards. Workers should run these boards. Due to the great expansion of, of Asian producers, China, Japan, and South Korea currently account for 88% of production. Croatia, in fact, Croatian shipbuilding ship industry, in fact, in fact, cannot compete in the production of tankers and container ships, but it, but it can compete in manufact manufacturing the ships that require a lot of special specializations, since there is the since there 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 is the know-how that was built up for decades. Therefore, it is possible to, to, to transform the shipbuilding, the shipbuilding to, the, to, the, to be extremely potent economic activity. But the bureaucracy of the European Union, following the dictates of international capital, does not tolerate any public spending, regardless of the overall effect 
one particular economy. So there is a good chance that the Croatia shipbuilding will end up just like the just like the just like the Polish shipbuilding industry, which in the process of the European Union had to cut production 40%. Prior to, join, prior to joining the European Union, Poland has operated 26 shipyards with 16,000 employees with 3% of the world production of ships. Polish shipbuilding industry was right behind Germany in Europe. Simply put, the Germans did not like it. By 2009, from 26 shipyards, there were, there were left only nine of them. The number of workers has been halved, and the share in the world production fell from 3% to 1%. Since then, the Polish shipbuilding continues to sink. Well, the current government, led by Social Democrats, took power in December last year. <coughs> Rhetoric that enabled, that enabled their rising to power was so many times a rehearsed, so, rehearsed story of the fight against corruption of the previous government. Soon after taking over the power in January this year, they announced the referendum on joining the European Union, which, result, which resulted with 66% of voters in favor of joining and 33% against. Debate on referendum was marked by brutal media propaganda, not seen, not, seen by the, not seen since the war years. Croatian accession to the European Union supported parliamentary option, all parliamentary options, church, National Academy of Science and Arts, union, union, unionists, capitalists, media celebrities, various so-called opinion makers, liberals, and even the generals from Haag. So constructed media shield was impenetrable, bulletproof. But it is interesting that a week later, representatives of the trading capital of the trading capital started to show concern of the law of the, over the loss of CEFTA market, although they knew all of this at the time and they were giving support. The only referendum before this one was when Croatian citizens citizens, citizens voted on independence from the Yugoslav Federation. Democra democratic deficit is blat blatantly ob obvious when a little country with a population just about 4 million has never in 21 year history used the referendum as democratic mechanism of decision making. More, impo more importantly, political elites, political elites even constitutionally, constitutionally protected themselves with the provision stating that referendum can be held only with 400,000 signatures collected in a period of two weeks is practically impossible. But in spring 2010, when trade unions succeeded in this difficult task, task, task and collected remarkable 800,000 signatures in two weeks demanding a referendum on preventing the assault on the workers' rights, even then it was not held, with, with, the, constitutional, with the constitutional court backing the ruling class against their own constitutional provisions they should be protecting. But it was not all in the way. But it was not all in vain. The assault on workers' rights was at least postponed, and the changes in the labor law have still have still not occurred, even though they are expected in the near future. So, with this remark on the co on the collection of signatures for the protection of workers' rights, it should be said that Croatia still has, at least on the paper, relatively protective labor law in compa in comparison with many. In many, in, with many EU countries, of course, in practice, this law is often bypassed with any, possi with any possible mean. Since the new government still does not, still do still does not want to interfer interfe interfere with the labor law, it, ad it adopts various minor laws that seek to derog derog derogate certain provisions of labor law. So far, unions agree to this per perverted game and even give support. This new government also started the privatizations of the shipyards, ready to accept dictation of pure bureaucracy that will bring only pain to this industry. With 70% of GDP created in the service sector, shipbuilding is one of the last standing industries. Members of the new government with triumphant, with a triumphant enthusiasm, enthusiasm, enthusiasm adopted the measures of so-called economic re of economic recovery. They already carried out reform of the, of the tax of the tax system, 
which gave capital many tax reliefs and burdened the workers with higher rates of value added tax. Value added tax is now at 25% and it is the highest, it is among the highest in Europe. There are, they also announced the introduction of real estate, real, real estate tax. This occurs when the price of electricity rose 20%, uh, price of the gas 30% and price of heating 33%. We expect the commercialization of healthcare services, privatization, or as they euphemistically call it, monetization of the highways. They also adopted law so that, so that highly educated gain, so the highly educated, highly educated workers can gain, can gain experience for 100, 100, 160, 1,600 1, 1, kunas or around 200 euros. On, along these lines, with righteous anger, they present economic plan to curb rampant public spending, supposedly, supposedly universal laziness of the public sector, and to relieve the entrepreneurial potential of intolerable tax, pre tax, pre tax pressure. They expect, that they, they expect that in the entrepreneurial activity, free from the pressure of unfair charges, should channel the excess, excess revenue to, the, to new employment and wage growth and thereby generate, generate economic growth and, ec and economic recovery. You know, this is known as the trickle-down economy. And this situation is extremely grim, grim and the population passive and unable to organize. So, so as if waiting for a spark that will ignite this accum accumulated dis discontent. But it does not come. So what is left? In the last 20 years, we have seen the consolidation of neoliberalism. In the, we have seen how the consolidation of neoliberalism has affected our uh, ability to organize, how affected our ability to, to build solidarity. I believe you will recognize many similarities between Croatian and Slovenian case in what I, in what I'm, about, in what I'm going to say. While neoliberalism, neoliberalism has gained momentum in the last 20 years, many institutions most competent with organizations and best equipped to counter the deleterious effect of neoliberal capitalism, which manifests, manifests, manifests itself weakened and disappeared. And with, and with, and with its weakened and disappearance, it has, it has also disappeared our collective knowledge of their strategic role. For generations, for a generation born in the late uh, in the late 80s, and those younger, we grew up in an atmosphere in which capitalism is articulated as the pheno phenomenon with no alternative. They, and not only they, are immersed in the context of an of an ability of an of the inability to resist, vary of unions and other forms of organized of organized resi resistance, caught in the political cycles through the cooperations of political economic elites and the, and the inactivity of, union, of unions, it only, it only diminished confidence to the, to the possibility of organized resistance. The labor movement, as the, the labor movement still remains fragmented, fragmented into pieces and it is difficult to set up much needed, uni, much needed unity, unity for the for the resistance. <clears throat> workforce, workforce is massively disorganized, permitted by uncertainty, uncertainty, fears, apathy, pessimism, left to military discipline of market relations. Although there is some, under, although there is some understanding for unemployed youth, it is simultaneous, it is simultaneous, simultaneously, it simultaneously go with many illusions of those, of those that are employed. The workers, and especially those better paid, they firmly, they fir they firmly believe and desperately, uh, and, de and, des and, de and, de and desperately they hold, they hold, they hold the, the demands of a ruling class true. They accept, they accept, they accept lower wages, low, longer working hours, Cutting the social net network so they will so they could keep their so they could keep the jo their job only one day more until the promised economic development 
continues. They will not give up of, they will not give up of their illusion because on the other side lies the stark reality of many unemployed with their social misery just around the corner. In such context, even those who question the alternative political approach have little opportunity to articulate their intentions because resistance that occurs comes more as a chaotic fire, not, uh, not as a result of, of the organization. Because of this, and because of this, skills required to establish, maintain, uh, to establish, maintain, expanding base become extremely limited. And the insights that come with formal guidance, financial assistance, and, the, and the direct experience cannot be extended. It, it becomes very, it becomes, it becomes so much harder to engage people in collective action. I can only express, it, it seems, <clears throat> it seems like, like a defeatist position, but, re but really it's not. On the contrary, I believe that there is a great hope for a different, for a different social order. But sober assessment of our current situation should be should be a necessary starting point for any for any pro, for any progress uh, progress for any for, for it should be a starting point for any effort which wants to progress for any resistance which want, which wants to strength to strengthen it, strengthen itself for every movement that that wants to win Mass, massive 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 streets protest without organized resistance it is very possible that protest after protest we will rehearse only the same only the same only the same platitudes with no visible effects while the while the entire political spec spectrum moves to the right the draconian austerity measures guarantee a long and painful stagnation <coughs> that will that will that will that will affect most of the the poorest and, and, more, and more increasingly the middle class. This situation creates a fertile, fertile ground for reactionary ideas, especially if progressive forces remain isolated in their narrow interests. All they deceive themselves with fantasies of, of their own power. So, in this dire perspective, we, we, we need to evoke all the, all the previous fights revive the memory of all the resistance that, that have appeared that have appeared before and aggressively try to take collective actions to defend the jobs and provide a social network all these fights did not appear out of nowhere so this so it is possible to invoke one one at least so it is possible to invoke segments of a better of a better of a better past as a mechanism to work to workers' resistance, it is a, it is a, it is extremely healthy and productive to draw inspire to draw inspiration and ideas from the battles around the uh, around the, around the world. Celebrate their success. Learn from their learn from their experience. But we but we cannot live but we but we cannot live through them. Therefore resistance that occurs in Slovenia will surely be an inspiration for the progressive forces in Croatia. But it seems to me that we still have a long way to go. So our in so we must start with interpretation that will be that will be without illusions. As I said, I have a great hope not only for the Croatia, Slovenia, but for all countries that are facing this mindless policy. And this and that and that, and that hope is this: no no reform is born out of desire or compassion that will show the ruling class. But only, from, but only as, the, as, as necessity and ex, uh, uh, only through necessity and existing needs. And how much and how big is the fear of the ruling class? We have seen in recent parliamentary elections in Greece. So the so the message is so the message is this one. We are we are done with personal co and and co and collective. So, we are done with personal collective sacrifices and and we must and we must spread out this this message to be louder the fate the the fate of the ruling class should be exactly the fate of don quixote those who live outside reality those who live outside outside the history trying to subordinate the reality to themselves with every with every step closer 
to the bias of the history. Thank you. Please, comments, questions, anything. Well, I hope I wasn't so, uh, so, so not under understandable. Why, why do you speak English? <laughs> we will understand you. So you can speak for all of the people here, right? Of course, it's good. It's good question, but. Let's just prepare some Croatian. Zadnji put kad sam bio, zadnji put kad sam bio ovdje, onda se pojavila ta određena barijera između 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 nas koji smo bili iz Hrvatske i vas iz Slovenije, da zapravo se ne razumijemo u pojedinoj terminologiji, pa sam onda odlučio se da za za izlaganje na engleskom da možda terminologija bude jasnija. Ne znam je li pomoglo, vjerojatno. Vjerojatno je. Mislim, ako, ako, ne, ako nemate vi pitanja za mene, možda imam neka pitanja za vas. <laughs> s obzirom na, s obzirom na uh, prosvede koji se, koji se događaju u Sloveniji, vjerojatno, vjerojatno postoje određena strateška promišljanja što, se, što, što, nam, što namiravate raditi zapravo u tjednima koji dolaze. Da li zapravo postoji određena organizacija, od, određena organizacija struktura koja, koja bi pokušala možda na formalni način utjecati na na, na, na politički spektar. Uh, evo, ja ću ti pokušati odgovoriti na ovo pitanje, pošto sam htio već prije dati jedan komentar na neke stvari koje si uh, napomenuo. Uh, to, što se, to o čemu si ti govorio, mislim, uh, Ove reminiscencije, ne? Um, aludiran je na, na to što se baš upravo sada dešava, što je operativni ekonomski program ove, ove vlade su nevjerojatne. Ne? Uh, kao jedan, govorio si o uh, krizi u bankarskom sektoru u Hrvatskoj 1999. Govori se o bailoutu koji je tada bio i o onda privatizaciji koja je slijedila nakon toga. Mi sada, mada mi u sada nismo u situaciji kad bi naše banke bile u stečaju, kad bi njima trebao bailout, ipak nas s jedne strane Europska komisija, komisija, sa druge strane strani vlasnici banaka, u prvom redu KBC, i naravno <coughs> lokalni izdajice, evo, tako da kažem, tjeraju to da se, da se uh, na način koji je skup i koji je neefikasan uh, obavi takozvana dokapitalizacija banaka i uh, sada je već jasno i maske su pale da je sljedeći korak uh, privatizacija map po kojoj cijeni. To je prvo. Znači to je jedan front banke. Druga fronta, privatizacija, rekao si, privatizacija telekoma i drugih infrastrukturnih preduzeća, poduzeća, uh, koje su ovdje do, do danas ostalo u, u državnom ili u mješovitom barem vlasništvu. Danas se, ili juče, ili preko, preko, preko juče, uh, već o otvoreno razgovara o privatizaciji svih ovih preduzeća koja nimaju nikakve veze sa uzrocima ove krize ni sa, ni, ni sa, ni sa rješenjem ove, ove krize. Znači to je druga fronta, takozvani slovenački državni holding. Holding naravno to je institucionalna forma za 
za jeftinu privatizaciju. Jeftinu, ne za nas, naravno, nego za one koji će doći kupiti ove firme. I treće, govorio si o referendumu. Govorio si o zakonodavstvu koje reguliše referendumsko inicijativo. I tu je sada jedna velika inicijativa ove vlade koja kaže, dobro, mi možemo ići na izbore za tri mesece, za tri mesece ako želite, samo prvo da provedemo ove reforme i jedna od njih je i reforma samog referenduma. Znači, to je treća forma, treća fronta, front, ili treća tačka sukoba oko promjena ustavnog ili državnog uređenja. Tu su i druge, ne toliko male stvari, ali dobro, kao što su mjere štednje, kao što je ovaj posteriti koje se koje se sada odslikuje u u predlozima proračuna za godinu 2013-2014. Znači, tu su problemi koji su vrlo slični. E sad, to je pitanje. Da li postoje nekakav način da se ove masovne prosvedi ipak formaliziraju? Na neki način formaliziraju ili da se posluže nekim više formalnim metodama parlamentarne, ajmo reći tako, da to se volodira na političku inicijativu. Za točku 1 i 2 to je sasvim jasno odgovor, ali sasvim jasno da. Imamo sada inicijativu za referendum oko takozvane loše banke, koja je sad na Ustavnom sudu. Imamo i referendum ili inicijativu za referendum za takozvani državni hodni, koji je također sad na Ustavnom sudu, ali ja računam da negde tamo posle početka nove godine kreće ova inicijativa. Znači, tu se možemo angažirati i tu su realne šanse da se pobedi, da se spreči barem sada, u prvoj fazi ovih plani privatizacije, koji se se ma svugdje gde su bili implementirani. Ne je samo u Hrvatskoj, nego je već prije 30 godina već traja ova šok terapija, jedan put negde, drugi put negde druge. Znači, i nikada ne donosi ništa drugo nego patnju za široke radne mase i profit za ratne ili ili privatizacijske profitere. Znači, jedan i dva, da, tu je moguće. Referendumska zakonodavstvo, naravno, mislim, i tačka jedan i dva trebali bi biti jedna, trebali biti između zahtjevima koje se artikuliraju na ovim prosvjedima. Mislim, mi smo sada prešli u jedno vrlo kratko vreme onu fazu gde se vikalo lopovi, cigani i tako dalje, To je ok, kao ljudi su bili ljuti, pa sad to je trebalo nekakav ventil da se napušte ove emocije. E, to je sada gotovo. Sad je i čovjek koji je bio nekakav uzrok ovakav direktni za ove prosvjede, znači gradonačelnik Maribora kao kaže da će otići, mislim da sa prvim, sa novom godinom. Znači, pa i onaj drugi direktni, prividni razlog za prosvjede i otpao. Tako da sada, mislim, ne, sada je logični korak ako želimo ići napred sa ovim, je to da se artikuliše u našim prosvjedima upravo ove zahtjeve koje su vrlo konkretne i za koje postoje vrlo jasna i određena alternativa. I, da, sad od oko referendumskog zakonodavstva, tu je sad naravno jedna inicijativa koja je tek, ali u kojoj postoji dosta velik konsenzus u samoj političkoj klasi, pošto oko ovih prvih dviju ne postoji, međutim oko ove treće da, i to je jedna, možda sad četvrta, između zahtjeva ovih prosvjeda, znači artikulisana zahtjeva. I četvrta ona koja već koja je možda u javnosti i u prvom planu, to je 
to je s jedne strane ovi austerity measures i privatizacija javnog sektora. Danas smo imali prosjede univerza u Ljubljani, se učilišta, imali smo pre tri nedelje prosjede sindikata i 21. je još jedan prosvet. Znači, moj predlog vama je to da se radi na tome da se sad vidi, mislim, i u javnosti da ovaj prosvet ima konkretne i direktne zahteve od kojih je jedna, naravno, i odazak vlada. Evo, to je nekakav odgovor tebi i poziv, naravno, drugovima ovde. Ono što se meni čini iz ovih prosvjeda u Sloveniji, čak i ako ne postoji zapravo politička opcija koja može djelovati u odnose između političkih elita, vrlo je važno već sama činjenica da zapravo narod izlaskom na ulice može postati kontrolni mehanizam vlasti. Tako da čak i do onog trenutka, ako se ne može politički intervenirati u političke odnose, još uvijek postoji dovoljna jaka snaga na terenu, na ulicama, koja može na neki način kontrolirati odluke vlasti. Čak... Čak i ako se ne raspisuje referendum, stoga već sam izlazak na ulice je zapravo može biti dosta moćna opcija. Tako, na primjer, ovo što sam govorio za Hrvatsku, kada Ustavni sud nije dopustio raspisivanje referenduma, iako su sindikati skupili dovoljne potpise, To je zapravo bio dosta jak udarac. Prvi put je nakon 20 godina sindikati su se okupili i pružili su određeni otpor. Da je u tom trenutku raspisan referendum, tadašnja vlada Jadranke Kosor, to je konzervativaca Palabi, SDP bi došao na vlast, SDP je ovako i onako došao na vlast, ali u tom trenutku kada stanovništva jedne zemlje ruši vlast na ulicama, ona zapravo upravo postaje taj određeni kontrolni mehanizam i vlada, sadašnja vlada socijaldemokrata sigurno ne bi išla toliko vehementno u program štenje s obzirom da bi došli na vlast tako da s obzirom da bi došli na vlast tako da je prošla vlada srušena. Tako da mislim da i u Sloveniji već samo rušenje vlasti na ulice može biti može biti vrlo 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 potentan vrlo potentan vrlo potenta motivacija za za nastavak određenih akcija. Gde možda jedno kratko pitanje u vezi sa privatizacijom od početka. Da li je to počelo već u 90-im kada je došao HDZ na vlast ili je to poslije rata bilo? Ne znam, se nastavilo u većem obziru. Da li već podijelio se sve to, sve te poduzeća za vreme rata ili tek poslije toga? Da, zapravo priča sa privatizacijom je zanimljiva utoliko što Privatizaciju je već na neki način uvela Markovića, vlada Ante Markovića, jugoslavijskog premijera, 1988. sa zakonom o investicijama i tim je zapravo de facto omogućila privatizaciju. Zakon o privatizaciji u Hrvatskoj je donesen 1991. znači upravo u u jeku najburnijih ratnih operacija i upravo zapravo u tom periodu 1991-1992 većina tih poduzeća podijeljena politički podobnim stranačkim kadrovima. Znači priče o ratnim profiterima su uvijek. S tim da su najveća poduzeća zadržana još uvijek u javnom vlastičnu poput Telekoma, koji će kasnije biti prodan Njemcima, naftne kompanije i tako dalje. Koji će kasnije biti prodan Njemcima. Da, to će. Imam ja još jedno pitanje. Kakva je situacija u Hrvatski sa univerzima? Mislim, u Sloveniji ima neka tendencija da se kao univerza u svakom selu, da? 
tako privatne univerze, tim ruše se javne univerze i onda ustanavljaju se privatne univerze sa javnim novcem. Ima to i u Hrvatskoj? Privatni univerziteti sa javnim novcem. Nije mi poznato, ali mislim, hrvatski fakulteti su u tolikoj mjeri komercijalizirani da zapravo veći dio njih zapravo funkcionira kao privatni fakulteti. Školarine su, s obzirom na životni standard u Hrvatskoj, među najvišim u Evropi. Tako da, u Hrvatskoj nisu potrebno privatna sveučilišta, jer privatna sveučilišta već postoje zapravo u javnom okviru. Ne znam, još jedno pitanje za vas, da li se recimo promišlja pitanje pozicije Slovenije unutar monetarne unije, koliko je to zapravo, koliko je monetarna unija utjecala na zapravo na snižavanje životnog standarda u Sloveniji od trenutka kad je uveden euro, što zanimljivo, što sigurno može biti zanimljivo i za Hrvatsku, s obzirom da sadašnji guverner prije koju godinu, dok je bio viceguverner, izavljivo da je zapravo ulazak Hrvatske, ulazak Hrvatske u eurozonu neka obećani raj koji će zapravo, koji bi Hrvatsku mogu učiniti konkurentnijom, što će je, što će poboljšati njezinu komparativnu prednost na zajedničkom tržištu Europske unije, s obzirom da se imaju jednaku valutu. Mislim, to čovjek govori u trenutku dok se zapravo monetarna unija raspada. Vjerojatno, s obzirom na ove proteste, postoje određene refleksije zapravo promišljanja pozicije Slovenije s obzirom na monetarnu uniju. Koliko je to utjecao njezinu ekonomsku poziciju? Slovike je razmišljala o tijeku. Evo, ja ću počet, pa će možda onda postoje neko još. Mislim da je odgovor na pitanje ne. To konkretno o čemu si ti sad govorio, mislim, izravno na izravni utjecaj evra ili primanja evra kao valute na životni standard, To je jedno pitanje o kojem se nikad nije dosta govorilo i u kojoj se nije dosta istraživano. Mada bi, možda su neke potrošačke organizacije govorili o tome, znaš, zbog toga jer je tada 2007. kad je to već bilo, došlo do poskupljenja i sasvim ovakvih tehničkih razloga zbog toga jer ako je sada, ne znam, nešto stoji blizu, ne znam, 1,8 marke, pa ako je kurz 2, onda ćeš ti to sve, mislim, ne, to je jasni mehanizam. I do toga je došlo, ja mislim da svugde i kod nas, i u tome se tada, oko 2007. i 2008. je pisalo. Ali ono što je, ja mislim, ozbiljnije, i što se sada pokazalo, tek u krizi je to, je su makroekonomske zbivanja do kojih je došlo posle ulazka najprvo u takozvani ERM2, to znači jedno godinu ili dve prije ulazka u eurozonu, ti trebaš već ispunjavati neke uslove i znači za tebe, ti si, tvoje performanse su iste kao bi trebali biti ako si u eurozoni samo, još nemaš, evo. Znači, posle ulazka u eurozonu i u EDM2 došlo je do mijenjanja situacije na području kreditiranja. Znači, to je u ovo vreme, baš u ovo vreme je došlo do jednog pregrinjavanja kreditnog kreditiranja iz inozemstva i potrošnja ovih kredita za investicije za koje se sad koje su rezultirane, kao što znamo sada, koje su više ili manje bile promašene. Pošto sada je 
ne znam, nekih 5-6 godina od toga i sad bi trebali već biti rezultati ovih investicija i sad bi trebala biti neka velika ekonomska rast, a mi smo opet posle dve posle dve godina, posle dve, tri, da, posle dve, tri godina, posle 2009. opet u recesiji, već čitavu godinu. Znači, to je s jedne strane jeftini kredit i ulazak u euro koji smanjuje realne i naročito nominalne kamatne stope. Koliko ja znam, Hrvatska nikad nije primjenivala nekakvih administrativnih kontrola kretanja kapitala. Signo nešto je. Ali nikakav nekih većih razmirama, pa ne znam da li bi to moglo utjecati i na hrvatsku ekonomiju. Vjerojatno u nekojim razmirima da. To je s jedne strane. S druge strane je to što je kriza javnog duga. I kamatna stopa obaveznica država. Jasno je da država koja se zadužuje u vlastitoj valuti ne može baš tako lako doći u jednu situaciju špekulativnog napada na njezine obaveznice. Zašto? Zbog toga jer se zna da će, ako će zatrebati, Narodna banka odkupiti obaveznice države, pa da će investitori barem dobiti nominalne pare koje očekuju. E, to mi ne možemo raditi i ECB još uvijek ne može na ovakav način, barem ne na primarnom tržištu, odkupovati papire, državne papire. I zbog toga smo mi više nego druge zemlje u situaciji, imamo sad veće probleme sa vanjskim dugom i sa stekanjem novih kredita koji su naravno u ovoj situaciji nužni zbog toga jer sad se onaj privatni kredit iz razdoblja 2004. i 2008. pretvara naravno u javni dug, to je socijalizacija i do ove socijalizacije u nekom razmiru o kojem naravno možemo diskutirati, mora da dođe ako ne želimo imati totalni krah privrede. Ali evo, sad je to vrlo teško financirati, pošto je zemlja u eurozoni i sada se zadužive po cijenama jedne Nigerije, recimo i po cijenama više od Hrvatske i tako dalje i tako dalje. I to je jedan drugi aspekt. Da, s obzirom na troškove rada, s obzirom da u Njemačkoj su postoji presija na nadnice puno jače nego u ostalim zemljama Evrope, a s obzirom da su unutar iste valute, to onda... Da, naravno. To onda dovodi do pozicije, zapravo Slovenija gubi svoju konkurencijsku poziciju u odnosu na... Mi smo uvijek imali sad ta prezipsiranu valutu, u stvari, ne? Možda, mislim, sad se trend okrenuo za posljednje tri godine, recimo. Kad troškovi rada kod nas rastu sporije nego, recimo, u Njemačku, realno. Ali to se događa i u Španiji, Portugaliji, tako dalje, ali to nema za sada nikakvih vidnih rezultata na konkurenčnost ovih zemalja i postoji sad nekakav, nije u pitanju nemački suhišnik. Zbog toga. Možda samo nešto kao zanimljivo. Svi mi smo slušali pričice kao neće ništa poskupiti kad ćemo primiti euro i to, ali mislim da smo svi mi posjetili razliku kad je došao euro, je recimo kafe je prije bio otprilike 100 tolara, to je znači 50 cent. A u roku od par mjeseci je to došlo na 1 euro. To je praktički duplo poskustilo, ono, razlika je velika i svi smo se bunili oko toga. Tako da, ja mislim da možete i to očekivati. Ja mislim da je ono čisto ludilo u ovom trenutku da bilo tko u Hrvatskoj zagovara ulazak u monetar budiju. Je, ali nama nije bila ponuđena nikakva alternativa. Svi su tjerali to kao moramo ući u EU, bit će nam bolje, bit će ne znam šta, ali šta. Plaće su ostale na istoj razini, čak su i smanjili sad u zadnje vreme, a 
Mislim, ja ne vidim neke pretjerane koriste. Svi su pričali o tim evropskim kreditima koje ćemo dobiti ful jeftine kredite, kako ćemo graditi. Gradili smo. Gradili smo, puno smo gradili. Vidite tu po gradu, pa vidite čekolika smo gradili. Da, da, naravno, za koje drugi? Mislim, u stvari neki su se ukoristili na to i opljačkali još to. A obični ljudi nismo imali nikakve koriste od toga. Znači, bolje nam bi bilo da smo ostali u Jugoslaviji, mislim. Samo smo se zadruživali svake godine za toliko koliko smo bili duženi 1991. Kako smo izašli iz Jugoslavije. Znači, 3 milijarde smo bili recimo dužni, ako podijelimo sve čitao taj dug. I svake godine do sad smo se zadružili za toliko milijardi dolar. Što je absurdno. Jer kao mi smo izašli zbog tog duga. Da, ne samo zbog duga. Dobro. Među ostalima. Nema što se tog pitanja. Tiče, čini mi se da između Hrvatske i Slovenije po pitanju Evrope nema baš toliko razlike. I u Sloveniji u ovom trenutku euroskepticizam kao politička pozicija ne postoji. Jedini koji se možda ima takvu poziciju je bilo onih 30-ak radikalnih desničara koji su bili onih petak na protestu i su imali napisano nećemo biti EU pezant. Sluga je. Da, sluga, da. Mislim, tamo, oko 2004. Slovenija je išla i u EU i u NATO. Sad, do te tačke, public support za jedno i drugo je bilo tamo oko 100%. To je neka postsocialistička tranzicijska zemlja koja izlazi van iz tamnoće Balkana. Vreme je sad da krajnje vreme je da idemo u zapadnu civilizaciju i to je to. Sad, za NATO je bila neka dosta uspešna kampanja protiv toga i na referendumu na kraju rezultat je bio 65% za, a 35% protiv. S obzirom da su to vodili manje više ovi kolege ovde iz Infoshopa, je bilo tako dosta grassroots, pa ok, bilo je i vreme Đorđa Duša Mlađeg, recimo je bila dosta uspešna kampanja. A za Evropsku uniju to nije postojilo. To je bilo 100% skoro ono plebiscitarno za Evropu i tačka. I tek sad, posle 2008. se počelo kao nešto malo u smislu ideje da stvari baš i nije idealna, ali, ne znam, recimo, po pitanju, ne znam, Njemačka i Grčka i take stvari, više se je recimo pisalo o Grčkoj, ne znam, definacijama oko Goldman Sachsa i take stvari. I tek sad u nekim tim više progresivnijim i kompleksnijim medijima imaš tako neke pisanje o tome da ipak Evropa nije Indija Koromande i uloga Njemačke je ovde problematička i tako dalje. Mada to je ono na ovom najviše abstraktnoj, na ovom više abstraktnom i teoretskom nivoju se o tome piše, da bi se to apliciralo na slovenski situaciju u ovim prošlim nekoliko godinama, baš i ne. Tako da imaš recimo te male anegdotalne priče kao recimo kava je puno poskupila i sa druge strane imaš stvari kao recimo slovenački građevinski sektor i banke koji imaju sada ne znam ovih koliko je 2,7 milijardi eura rizičkih kredita, taj kreditni boom, ali interpretacija toga je Ah, to je zbog političkog kadrovanja, ne trebamo direktora koji su ili lijevi ili desni, a to se baš i nije još povezalo, recimo, sa kreditnom proliferacijom kao posljedica monetarne, mislim, monetarne financijske politike Evropske unije. Tako da, to se još nije dogodilo, ovde nemamo ne lapavica sa... ili nešto tako. Zanimljivo, recimo, referendum u Hrvatskoj je bio prije desetak mjeseci, to je zapravo u trenutku kada se zapravo ekonomska situacija u zemljama Juga praktički raspada, a u Hrvatskoj čak i generali iz Haga poručuju uđite u Europsku uniju, tamo vas čekaju, tamo vas čeka ekonomski prosperitet, politička demokracija, bla bla bla. Ko je to kazao? Ante Gotovina iz Haga je poručio, uđite u Europsku uniju. Naravno, u liberalnim krugovima 
kao da se kao da se zapravo kao da kao da se ništa nije dogodilo zapravo kao da se kao da se Jugoslavija nije raspala ima postoji taj cijeli 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 uh, građanski buržski literarni uh, narativ iz osam, iz 80-ih ne znam kada Česlav Miloš piše o rodbinskoj Europi, Milan Kundera piše Milan Kundera piše o Europi i Gras Gras Lenska neti slično kao kao da zapravo eto sve vas je razočaralo ali eto u Europskoj uniji čeka vas taj uređeni uređeni Biedermeier građanskih krugova gdje zapravo cvjetaju ruže i i, i ne znam cvate ekonomski prosperitet. Ok, to je to, hvala. To znači riječi puta na engleskom ili na hrvatskom? Na hrvatskom. Ok.